Hi everyone, welcome back. If you appreciate what I'm doing, if you press like and subscribe, that would be great. I want to look at cylinders. I'm seeing how many of my present students struggle with cylinders. So I just grabbed a couple of things out of the cupboard that would make sense. Now, one thing I do about this, so if you look at a cylinder that way and you try to draw it like that, you can't see what the actual shape of that is. You can only see the end. When you start to tip it, the top end, what's interesting is that top, which is a circle, actually when you start looking at it in 3D, it becomes an oval. And probably my oval here is about the same as that. Sometimes people will draw it fairly skinny, like a skinny oval there. Actually, I tried to draw these freehand at home, and uh, the more I tried, the harder it was to get two of them that looked the same and actually looked like ovals. Of course, I could tip it the other way and come around to there like that. And people do all sorts of weird things with them. But I'm just going to measure it rough. This one here on the bottom, I'm going to go across that, and it's about eight centimetres. It's not quite. But for our purposes today, so the numbers will be nicer. Or maybe I could actually make it as seven centimetres. There you go. It's closer to seven centimetres. So if I said across, all the way across here, and I drew it up on here, get that out of my hand, across the bottom, I could have said across the top, all the way across there is about seven centimetres. And what's what math teachers do? We draw that seven centimetres in the middle there. We're talking about all the way from one side to the other. And of course, if we're going all the way from one side to the other, we're calling it the diameter, and we usually call it D. Now, why did I measure the diameter? Because it's actually hard to measure the radius, because you've sort of got to go try to figure out where the middle is. So it's one of the things why we have any questions often, is we give you the measurement of the diameter. Now, then you've got to be careful with the diameter that you're not going to use D in the formula. None of the formulas use D for volume or for surface area. So that's actually what we're going to end up doing, is if I write half a seven, half a seven is 3.5, if I wrote it there, so seven written here means all the way across, 3.5 written to the side means the radius. So I could talk about it and I could say, well, that's the diameter, which is all the way across. And I could say that that one there is the radius and the radius is from the middle to the outside or it spokes on the wheel and then the other figure we've got again is how far it goes up here and if you look at the formulas we've got this thing h for height so by the way if i turn that so let's measure it first so if i get the height of that first the height of that first is about it's about eight centimeters you can see just there the height's about eight centimeters now if i hold it that way it's eight centimeters if i hold it sideways it's still eight centimetres and I always talk to people about if you turn me upside down I don't get taller and the height of that one is eight I can put it that way so still eight so how can you tell what the height is I mean it's obvious for us it's from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet with my feet standing flat on the ground so we're talking about though with prisms there's a circle at this end there's a circle at that end if I turn it around there's the same size circle at the other end now it's not perfect on this not, but it's good enough for our purposes. So there's a circle on the end and a circle on the end. So the distance between the two circles is called the height. So if I drew it that way, the distance between the two circles is still called the height. If I'm laying down in bed, it's still my height. If you turn me upside down, it's still my height. I keep on talking about. Let's have a look at what we've got. So all we've measured off that is we measure how wide it is, which is called the diameter, and how tall it is, which is called the height. So if I wrote on here, I measured that that was eight centimetres, this part here. So all the way from this circle to that circle is called the height. Some people put extra lines and arrows on to show that it is, but in this question here, that A is obviously from there to there, which is the height of the cylinder. So I go to the formula and had some people saying to me yesterday, what do I do? Oh, first of all, they'll say, what's pi? Why do we use pi? I was interesting, I was up at Wolf Creek, uh, um, meteor crater up north here in Western Australia and I stood there and I worked out how long would how far would it be if I walked all the way around the crater it's a very good circle or how far would it be if I walked across the circle and what would be the difference with them one of the simple rules is it's about three times as far around as it is across and that's called pi so it's not exactly three it's a bit over three so a lot of people say 3.1 so 3.1, but we've got to store it in our calculator. Of course, we can go more decimals, and I know it's 3.1415926. I know some of them. So we press the pi button on our calculator. 
And then we're going to multiply it. Why is it multiply between any two letters or a letter and a number or a symbol and a number? We've got to multiply. And then the radius is not 7, it's a 3.5. Now, I do have some students who are struggling with the fact that it's a square. That just means 3.5 by 3.5. But if you don't understand, you press the buttons on your calculator. Now, there's a number of times here, and then the height is 8. So to me, volume and surface area of cylinders are, are like the absolute giveaway marks that you can't get wrong, unless they try to trick you into uh, maybe metres here and centimetres there. And by the way, of course, that little shape, I'm drawing it as that big shape up there so you can see what it is. Now, it's also not the scale as well, so if that was 7, would that be 8? It's actually pretty close. So if that was 7, that's probably about 8 if I measure it accurately. So we often talk about that this is not the scale. So we're not talking about measuring, we're talking about using your understanding of the formula to work out the answer. So on my calculator I have that as 307.876 and the numbers keep going on and on. And I could appear from down if we wanted to, zero, wait, maybe it's good to for one, one. Now we're talking about volume, when we're talking about volume, we're talking about, in this case of centimetres, we're talking about centimetres cubed. And then we're back to rounding off. Now, a lot of people will say, make it accurate to one decimal place or two decimal places. I still talk about peekaboo all the time. So if I cover over, for example, I wanted two decimal places, I could write it as 87 or 0.87. I should be correct. It's not actually 87. 0.87. And the next number, you look at it, is it big or small? Most people are okay, but six is big. If that's a big number, which is bigger than five, instead of saying eight, seven we're going to write eight eight and the reason we write eight eight is that this is actually closer to eight than it is to seven so we've got that written there with that in the old school i used to have to write two dp behind it two decimal places so now if i calculate the surface area and there's a times between each of these but remember there's a plus here times between each of these so we're using the same numbers we write two times a pi the radius we know was 3.5 and don't get caught and put the seven and then the height is 8. Now, we're not talking about an understanding of why this works. We're talking about here's the formula and accepting that it does work and just using it. I've also got people doing a test on Friday and they're struggling, so this hopefully be enough for them to understand it. So the radius again is 3.5 and you put squared. Now, if I did my calculator, I just press 2, multiplied by the pi button, wherever your pi is stored on your calculator, multiply. Just wrote exactly what it said, just going from left to right. And I end up with 252. I write the whole thing down 8982, 8982, and 086. All this means if you're writing that many numbers is how accurate it is. Now, by the way, this one here was volume. Volume we talked about cubed. And we talk about little cubes, by the way. We that's the where the word comes from is cubes. They're not a flat surface, they're a shape that's got volume to them, they've got size to them. Now, if I look at this one here, people will say, oh, that's got size to it as well. But we're not actually calculating how much that fits into there. We're saying how much is around the outside. So surface area, if you have a look at the formula, there's one circle plus another circle. So that's the 2 pi r squared. So one circle is pi r squared, and you say there's two of them. And this bit around the outside here, what we're talking about is the circumference. And if you remember, the circumference is 2 pi r and we're talking about 2 pi r times by the height. And that's how we get this curved bit around here. So people will talk about the curved section. 2 pi r h is the curved section. And 2 pi r is the two ends. So we're talking about the flat surface around here, not what goes inside. And the flat surface, we're talking about if it was centimetres, we're talking about centimetres squared. Now again, if I round it off, Oh, I'm going to do this one on purpose. This is a bit weird. I'm glad it worked out that way. So is it going to be 89 or is it going to be 90? And I shouldn't say 89 or 90 because it's actually decimals. Is it 89 or is it 90? So after 89, the next one becomes 90. So let's have a look at it. So I cover over the 8. So is it going to be closer? So I'm actually going to use the words 89. Is it closer to 89 or is it closer to 90? That's a big number, and the moment we see that that's a big number, what happens is 1 after 89 comes 90. So we've got 252.90. And be careful of it, because that zero counts. It tells us how accurate our measurement is, and that's also the two decimal places. 
Now, much quicker I'll go through these ones. So let's have a look at this shape. I've got another shape here if I turned it on its side. And again, it's a cylinder. If I went across the bottom, I've got, oh, that's about 10 centimetres across the bottom. So if I drew it up here, like that way, I need to draw in by 10 centimetres across the bottom, or the base, which is the diameter. And if I go all the way from there to there, I've got about 17 centimetres. But the wooden top's a little bit different size, but I'm going to use it rough enough. So it was how far across the bottom? I say again, that was 10 and that was 17. So if I put 17 here, so that was 17 centimetres, and I go how far across the bottom? Video's getting too long. That one there actually says 20, which is interesting, because mine turned out to be 10. So if I measure across there, all the way across is going to be, and by the way, a, a dot stands for the middle. So that's a 10 centimetres. If I write it there, it means all the way across. If I write it there, it means the radius. So if I go through this one and write the numbers in, we know we've got the pi button we're going to press, which means about three for those who are struggling with it, a bit more than three, about 3.1. And then we've got the radius of five, not 10. And again, it's easier to measure them all the way across and then just halve it, that's five squared. And then another multiply and the height 17. And when I put into my calculator, I get an answer of 1335.176878. And again, if we're talking about volume and centimetres, we go centimetres cubed. This time I'm going to write the answer to one decimal place. Over here we wrote two. This was something different. 1335. Now a lot of you just look at that and you know it's going to be two. But I found many students over the years don't. So if I cover over the seven. Is the next number after the one the big number? Yes. So we're not going to write a one, we're going to write a two. And that's centimetres and it's volume, so a cube, just keep remembering volume. Volume is a three or a cubed, and I wrote that to one decimal place, so I can put one dp. So we go to the next one, surface area. It's a two times the pi button times the radius again, getting five. And a lot of you know I don't like long videos, but this is getting too long. Then I get two times the pi button times this time the radius squared, which is five, watch out, five squared is not 10. Five squared is five times five. Put it into my calculator and I get 691.15, 3838. And again, we're talking, this one is talking about area. It's actually surface area. So we write centimetres with a little two. Area is about two. Surface area is about two. Area is about two. Volume is about three. So we talk about cubed and we talk about squared. So if I write it to one decimal place, 691 point. Now one five, this is very close actually. It's very close to halfway between point one and point two. So it's slightly closer to point two. Let's have a look. So the rule is, if you see a five there, you make that a two. Now, if it was exactly 1.5 there, so a different story, you can go either way. So a centimetre squared, we've got one decimal place. Wow, I hope that helps. Um, really, it comes down to getting the numbers, getting them off a diagram, put them in the formula, write an answer down, just be careful with your decimals. Thanks for watching. I'll, I'll see you in another video.